Hey guys, it's Lars here from Unicorn Reviews. Now, in the news we keep getting a lot of stories about countries spying on everything and everyone and then hackers hacking into everything and everyone. So, you know, Western Digital and Seagate and Synology, Assistor, all those um, companies are now doing MyCloud devices. Well, this is MyCloud, it's probably a registered trademark. But a lot of companies are doing these private cloud devices. Tonido was one I started with some years ago. Um, free NAS, all those sort of stuff, you know, have your private cloud which no one else can access. So security is pretty important with this thing. Now, what we have here is the Western Digital MyCloud. This is the 4 terabyte model, there's a 3 terabyte model, a 2 terabyte model, and a 1 terabyte model as well. There's also a mirror version which has two internal drives, this one only has one. Now, sadly, you can't swap that drive out for anything else. Kinda sucks, uh, but you know, it's a, a fairly cheap device, this one. Now, if you want to extend your storage, you can do that via the USB 3 port. And this is actually one of the fewer uh, ones that have a USB 3 port because the Seagate Central only has one USB 2 port. This is USB 3. You can, you know, hook another drive up to that one. Everyone happy, of course. Uh, power, the power brick is fairly small, so I didn't even bother showing it. Uh, that's pretty cool, so it just plugs in here. And then we have Gigabit Ethernet. Now, that's one of the reasons I bought it, not because of the interface, because all those devices competing in this class have that, but because the writing and reading speeds are fairly high, but we'll go into that in this little bit of software right now. Now, installations are very easy, you just plug in the power, the Ethernet port, and then you have to figure out what your IP address is going to be. And you just type it in your browser and you end up with a screen like this. Well, not the first time, you'll, first you'll have to make an account, but the second time you can have a screen like this and then you just log into their web app. Now, it's a bit slow to load up, it's, it keeps scanning for what content you have, but you get a view on your firmware, if it's up to date or not, uh, your diagnostics, how many shares you have, how many cloud devices, which isn't accurate for some reason, I only have one. Uh, capacity doesn't always uh, work because it's still scanning content, it doesn't quite know it uh, right away, so it's a bit slowish. Now, another annoying thing is you'd say shares tree, so you click the amount of shares, that doesn't work like that, you actually have to go to shares here. Then again, it's a, some, a little bit of lag, it's not un, unusual, unusable, but it's you know not perfect either. So then you have all your, your shares. Now, an annoying little thing that I'm going to start off right away, I started the video with saying this is about security, um, and it's also like a way to replace your Dropbox. Now, the only way you can get someone else to access your files is by FTP, or by giving them an account and letting them, letting them log into your thing. However, they always have access to the public folder. You cannot turn this off. As you can see, it's grayed out. You can't even change the name without actually logging into this thing through SSH and then starting messing around with it. Now, I called Western Digital about this, and they said once you enable the SSH, uh, they no longer support that sort of stuff. So, yeah, you kind of if you want to make it work the way it should work, you kind of have to do stuff they don't want you to do. Uh, other than that, uh, normal folders is pretty usable, so you just create users and then you can give them full access, read only, or no access. Simple stuff really. You can't set quota or any of the things you would actually like to use. You can set media serving on because this is also a DLNA server, so that's what this public folder is mostly for, um, you know, for movies. It also comes with pre-maps uh, pre like um, public videos, public music, and public something else. Now the user screen, very very similar. It's quite an easy to use interface, mostly because it's quite limited as well. So you just create an account here, I'll have to blank this email address out so I don't get a bunch of emails if people actually want to watch these videos. Now you can you know see which shares which user can use, so it's kind of like duplicated because you can do it shared bit, share based, but you can also do it user based. Uh, cloud access is just something you have to turn on and then create accounts for that cloud access. Now, save points, this is a bit of a disappointment. Uh, this is just a, uh, a backup that you can make of your uh, MyCloud device, which is pretty stupid, I thought, because it does have, if we go to settings, it does have Time Machine for Mac, but it can't um, do it without the Mac Time Machine. So I was kind of hoping that the save point would enable me to go back to the files I had on there last week, for example, uh, it won't allow me to do that. So the web interface, very, very limited uh, security-wise. It's not all that great, actually. 
Uh, for the home network, of course, it's fine. Uh, we're now going to move to the apps which you have to use if you want to use this outside of your own network. All right, guys, so this is the MyCloud um, desktop app. There's also a mobile app, which I'll show you guys later. It's fairly similar to what we just saw, uh, except for the fact that we now have subfolders, so I can go into my pictures, um, you know, if I want my edited pictures, the ones I spam all over my Instagram account, I can have these here. Now, an annoying little thing uh, with my Surface uh, and a laptop that I also use, when you click and drag, some reason with touchpads, it kind of acts up and then it won't copy, but for this you can just, you know, drag it out, it will, down, it will upload the file if you want to drag another file in there. It's that simple. Uh, this is over a uh, my gigabit Ethernet network. Uh, we're going to show you what it's like when you use uh, Wi-Fi and external access. So, from for example, from the other side of the world, uh, what it's like then. Uh, well, I can already tell you that it's pretty good. All right, guys. So the mobile app is available for iOS and for Android. No Windows version, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I did uh, search for it in the Windows App Store. Now, when you connect, it actually connects pretty quickly, and you can see your devices and your downloads and the activity on it. When you press a device, uh, as you can see, not a whole bunch of action here. This button, you can do a lot of things with it, but I'm not getting any folders or anything. So you kind of have to restart it every time if you want to you know, get access to your folders. So now that we do have access to my folders, it is pretty usable. Uh, I can again go into my Instagram pictures and look at them. Thumbnails is something you can turn on or off in the app um, to save space. But when you do press a picture, uh, it opens up fairly quickly. Also over 4G, uh, of course, depending. The 4G will obviously depend on your upload speeds of your home network. Now, I'm pretty happy with the app, except for one little thing. So say we open up the camera, we take a random picture with a flash for some reason. Uh, we open the picture and then we try and share our picture. Uh, then we have to select the, um, the MyCloud thing. Now it will just go into downloads for some reason. You have to press this button then, um, then upload, but then it makes you choose what picture so it's a very unintuitive uh, way to upload to it but downloading from it is perfectly fine all right so we're logged into a public Wi-Fi now and uh, we'll just see how the app behaves because as I said this is on my uh, my surface so uh, yeah with the uh, the touchpad it gives these security errors at that point um, not very happy about that but we get to our files, you know, that's the important thing, we get to our files. Now, as I said, when you just click and drag, right here you can see it, it won't actually drop the file for some really weird reason. So you have to go very, very gently and then it will actually work. It's also the same uh, way, or, you know, the other way around. So if you want to upload to it, same thing, you have to be really, really careful and move in a very linear way and a slow, steady pace or otherwise it simply won't work. Now, performance of this thing, as I said, mostly dependent on your home upload speeds and the speeds of the Wi-Fi network you're accessing or the 4G network or 3G network that you're on. All right, guys, so as you can see, I mapped uh, these things as a network drive, which you can map each share as a network drive, which is, of course, pretty handy. And then I'm just going to go to my local disk, um, one of my videos, and let's just copy a video over because I wanted to show you uh, the speeds. So we're getting pretty all right speeds, around 19 megabytes a second. Now this is of course an MP4 file, uh, which is quite, you know, it's one large file, so it's easy for the device to get these sort of speeds. Now I'm just gonna cancel it because we don't have all day. And I'm just gonna copy over the awards, which is too fast to actually show it. That is quite a bummer. Um, let's take a few things with very small files in it. So as you can see, when you copy very, very small files, um, except for the errors you get, uh, speeds are around one megabyte, two megabytes a second. Um, they're all right with JPEGs, you know, we're now getting 10, 20 with Photoshop files. That's all pretty all right-ish. And then the larger files, again, we get really high copying speeds, which actually is the reason I bought it, because the Seagates only get up to, to 30 megabytes a second. This one gets up to 90. I've even went 
around 95 when there was pretty much no traffic on the network. Now this is a PC with a gigabit net, gigabit NIC connected to a gigabit switch connected to you know the MyCloud. So not really a lot of interference with different devices and a lot of network traffic there. So that was a pretty much ideal situation. Alright guys, so time for the conclusion on the MyCloud. And first of all, as a cloud thing, it's not very good because I showed it earlier, sharing with different people is very very hard, whereas on Dropbox it's just clicking a link, sending it. You actually have to make accounts for this one, uh, or have FTP servers and you know well it, it's an FTP server pre-installed but you have to then get FTP clients to the people you want to share files with which is quite difficult and then those people also have access to your public folder which in my opinion is the most annoying thing ever I just want someone to get a link and then they can download from this thing right away that would be ideal right it's very hard at this moment to do that um, other than that though four terabytes with this one 200 euros great write speeds great reading speeds very very usable, it streams to everything, no compatibility issues so far except with Windows 8. If you have multiple devices logged in with the same Microsoft account, you can actually get some issues because it won't let you log in twice with the same account because nothing ever allows that. Uh, other than that, it's quiet, doesn't use too much power, there is a little rattling sound when it's very quiet, you can hear it, uh, but not all the time. So with all that sort of stuff in mind, I'll pop a, let's pop it this corner. So. Let's put a bronze award right there because it is a great device as a NAS. It's perfect. Well, not perfect, but it's very good as a NAS. And you know, as a real cloud device, as long as you use the cloud for yourself, it's still great. It's accessible from everywhere. Uh, uploading to it is not quite as easy on mobile devices. Uh, but the main problem I have with it is that I can't share links with whoever I want without creating accounts especially for them. And then another thing I didn't show actually, uh, when you do want to share it, you have to like right click the file and then use the email button. Now if you don't have an email client installed, it will just open up a blank page in your internet browser. If you do copy link and then paste that link in the internet browser, it will say that the file won't load, which is pretty annoying. But other than that though, it's a really good device. I would recommend it. I'm only giving it a bronze award because it's called the MyCloud. As a cloud device, it's not perfect, uh, but that was pretty much it. Guys, if you like the video, press the like button. If you dislike the video, press the dislike button, but please don't. Uh, you can subscribe right there. Uh, you can comment right below here, uh, which is something I really like, and I'll try to reply to each question. I'll read them at least. And um, is there anything else? Oh, yes, there's a Patreon account. So if you like these videos and you want to help me grow and help Unicorn Reviews and even Tech Block Time, grow uh, you can do small donations on patreon and there's also an email an ebay account so say i'm bored of something or i bought something and didn't quite like it uh, i'll put it on the ebay so you guys can buy it from me uh, and then i have money to buy new stuff that's pretty much the whole idea behind it anyway thank you all very very much for watching